Welcome back. Today we have the conclusion of our interview with Chad Crete, entrepreneur and chef of the year. As business owners, we know it's difficult to keep our management teams focused. Chad has some amazing tips on how to keep them focused every day. Welcome to this edition of Peak Performers Podcast with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. What would you try if you knew you could not fail? Oh, man. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have a good answer to that. If I, if I could try something, I knew I would not fail. Well, restaurants are not the, necessarily the best thing to go into, but... It's all that's what I know well, and that's that's what I that's what I've always done. So my 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 experience so far in business is I've gone out to do something that I just knew that we could do. I don't I don't I don't have a good answer for you for that. Yeah, well, everything that you've tried so far has been successful. So so far so, so far, far good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- there will be a failure along the way. Yeah, I, I don't make it with the next uh, venture. I know exactly. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to interview someone for an hour, dead or alive, who would it be, and what would you ask him or her? I think, you know, there's, you know, one, one of my, one of the people that I definitely really, you know, look up to in, in regards to the, the, the business, who's not only one of the top chefs in the country, but also one of the most success, successful uh, restaurateurs and chefs, um, is, is Daniel Balud. Daniel Balud, you know, started with restaurant Daniel in New York city. He's got a portfolio of restaurants all over the world. I would definitely love to sit down and pick his brain. Um, that's somebody that's you know just absolutely crazy about details and execution at the highest level. And I just I, w- I would love to hear from him how he's able to do that with locations across the world and how he had to you know as he grew how he had to delegate a lot of those decision making but still you know create you know one of the top restaurant brands that's out there and you know what i learned is you know when we had one restaurant going from two you know you're splitting yourself a lot thinner you know and with our goal to you know make this a scalable brand and having restaurants that necessarily i'm not in every day you know i'd really love to see from his perspective some of his advice on really how to maintain that level of excellence across across continents and across multiple different styles of restaurants and he's still alive he is. Yes. Awesome. So if there's anyone out there that knows him, you're going to have Chad's information at the end of this discussion. So send Chad a note and say, hey, I know him. That I'll would, set up the interview. That would be awesome. Or you could send him an email. I should. Find him on social media. Uh, should, did he just say should? You should or you can? I can. All right. There we go. If you were going to go back and give the 13-year-old Chad advice, what would you tell him? You know, I, I think I... I learned, I think everything happens for a reason. I think, you know, ultimately, even though, let's say, for instance, my, you know, my last business venture with my, with my previous business partner didn't go necessarily as planned, you know, there's definitely some things that, you know, I would have told myself when, you know, when it comes time to go into business, especially at a young age, when you, when you start having success, I think you, you, it's really important to stay focused and to also make sure that you, you know, don't wear your emotions on your, on your sleeve and, you know, try to always make sure to talk things out, um, with those people that may be, you know, frustrating you at the time. And, you know, I, but then again, at the same time, the the fact that, you know, that happened and it didn't end up the way that I wanted to. And, and, and thinking back on all the things I could have done differently, you know, I've learned an immense amount from that. And it also shapes my decision making personally and professionally now going forward with a new business partner and a new venture. Um, You know, I think when I was younger, you know, I constantly had a vision and I worked towards a goal and I got there. And I think when by the time we opened our first restaurant and I was, you know, we were having, you know, thankfully an immense amount of success, I did struggle with it for a little bit. Like, all right, I've aimed for this my whole life, I'm here and what I've always wanted to do. 
And I, I struggled with it a little bit of saying, all right, well, what's next? Like I, I, I had I had an internal struggle with like, okay, this is what I've aimed to do my whole life. I feel like I'm sort of here. And now I was asking myself constantly, all right, now what do I do? What's next? And yeah. I think I think as I've gone through that experience and I and I get older and with the new with the new venture, I think I'll handle that a little differently. I think there's always something next and there's always something better you can be doing. Um, and even though you once you achieve your goals and you, you think you've gotten there, I think what I've learned is all right, now it's time to go back to the drawing board and, and revisit, all right, what, what are the next set of goals, personally, professionally, and otherwise? Yeah, you constantly have to be raising the bar because if you're not, you're either growing or you're dying. And what happens so often is that entrepreneurs think that once they get to their objective, their goal, then they'll be happy. And, and you know, if you've been out there long enough, you get to it and it's like, all right, that was cool. I like that, but this is not really, you know, this is not the end. What's the next step? You've got to constantly be doing that. I just started to implement some additional questions into the interviews. And, you know, it's interesting. I think we all go through life and we go, What's, what are we trying to get? What are we trying to achieve? And it normally comes down to, I want to be happy. I want to be wise. I want to be healthy. I want to be successful. And we all have different definitions for these words. But if I were to ask you, what is the secret? to being happy, successful, wealthy, and wise. Because isn't that really all we want to know? Yeah, I know. It's, uh, you know, once again, having having that formula, I think there's a reason why they say wisdom comes with age, and you don't really learn that until you've gone through your life experiences. And I think it means more to me. It mean, it's different. To, that meaning, that, that whole idea is different to me now than it was six years ago, eight years ago. And I think now what the way I look at it is, you know, there's, there's never, you never can be fully balanced, right? I, I mean, I, you try, you try to always be as balanced as you can. So you want to have, you know, business success, but you also want to make time for your friends and your family and for yourself, most importantly. And, you know, I think that, as a business owner, you realize that there's more to success than, you know, financial success and, you know, what you're doing with your business, but you're responsible now for a lot of people and a lot of other people's well-beings and, you know, their livelihoods. And I think, you know, you have a responsibility not only to your, you know, your investors and your employees and yourself, but you know, taking time to making sure that you're making an impact in, in positive ways other than, you know, your business. So whether that's your community or whether that is, you know, making sure you take time for yourself. I think I got burnt out. Definitely. Um, I didn't make enough time for myself and I, and, and it was really, it was really not healthy for me. And so, you know, whether that's, you know, scheduling an hour every day in the morning to make sure you can wake up, go to the gym and really just make time for yourself. Put it on your calendar. You put everybody on your calendar for meetings and you, you, what I realize is that you usually fill up your calendar with all these meetings and every time there's a blank area, you're like, oh, I have availability in this area. And I think one of the things that I've been trying to do differently is, you know, especially for restaurants, you know, between two and four o'clock in the afternoon is, is a little bit of downtime, you know, and I, I've made a commitment that, you know, between two and four in the afternoon is going to be kind of my time to do what I need to do, whether that is I'm going to leave, you know, and I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to come home and take my dog for a walk or I'm going to, you know, do something that is just downtime, whether I pick up a book and read for an hour and go grab a coffee. Um, and I think the most important thing with all of that is, you know, to continually to make, you know, make goals once you've reached where you are. But I've learned that how important it is to really take time for yourself to keep yourself really clear headed and not and not become overwhelmed. I think that happens a lot. And that's something that we're looking to do for not only myself, but how I feel we need to do it for our employees and for our company. You know, the restaurant business seems to, is one of those that tends to burn people out a lot. You know, and for instance, as we're looking to recruit managers and employees, if we can do something like give our managers three days off once a month, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, and have them rotate off. Mm. I mean, that is immense amount of refresher. I mean, I think it's really time to take time to refresh and, and reset um, because you come back a lot more focused. You come back a lot more 
you know, clear headed and you, you really have time to, to digest everything. Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. You've got to take care of yourself first because you've got to show up with all the energy and, and all, all of you to be able to give to the business. And uh, to do that, you've got to take time to take care of yourself. Absolutely. And I like what you say. Also make sure that you continuing giving back to, to others. So uh, tell the audience how they can get uh, in touch with you, the new restaurant address, so they can come check yeah, you out. Yeah, so everything is hopefully on target. We are, uh, you know, we're still in the process of, you know, permitting and doing all that, but we're still on our, you know, still our goals mid-January. So the new restaurant is called Whiskey Bird, and Whiskey Bird is going to be located in Morningside, which is on North Highland Avenue, uh, just north of Virginia Highlands in a great little neighborhood. Um, and it's, you know, the address is 1409 North Highland Avenue, Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. And if all goes well, we'll be open mid-January. If not, we will be open by February. And you can get a hold of me via my email, which is chadcrete at gmail.com, C-H-A-D-C-R-E-T-E at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Can they follow the updates on Facebook or something? So we just created a landing page for the website, and that is eatwhiskeybird.com. And our uh, our Instagram handle is Whiskey Bird, so we were lucky enough just to get that, which nice. is awesome. And we'll be setting up all of that here in the next couple of weeks, so look, look, stay tuned for that. Facebook page should be going up in the next couple of weeks as well. Great. And if you're flying through Atlanta, it's probably a 20-minute uh, cab ride from yeah, the airport, absolutely. so that's real easy. And tell them a little bit about the concept, because the concept's awesome. Yeah, the concept is something that we got some inspiration uh, of when we were traveling throughout Asia and really kind of I had a we had a eureka moment when we were um, traveling. And I, I love the concept of Japanese yakitori, which yakitori in Japanese is essentially grilled chicken. Um, you know, we are kind of straying a little way from, you know, we don't necessarily want to be an authentic Japanese yakitori restaurant. But I, what I love about the concept is every culture has something on a stick. All right. That's the oldest way of cooking <laughs> something. Um, and so, you know, we're going to we're going to offer skewers by the piece. Um, so there'll be various different chicken, fish, meat, vegetables. Um, we'll do some different steam buns and some different uh, tacos that we're going to use a gyoza shell, which is almost very similar to a wonton wrapper. So the tacos are about two bites a piece that you'll be able to order, you know, by the piece, by the each. And so the idea really is to order, you know, a few skewers, maybe a couple steam buns, a couple tacos. We're going to have a uh, you know, good variety of vegetable dishes on the menu. I think people are eating more and more vegetables. And I think, you know, that's, that's really important uh, to give that kind of wide breadth. So the whole concept of the restaurant is really to, you know, and obviously we're going to have a big beverage program with great cocktails and a good selection of, you know, domestic and Japanese whiskey. And so that really, we want to make it really fun, approachable, um, high energy, and we want people to come in, order a bunch of different things off the menu, pass them around and share. Well, if it's anything like your past uh, restaurants, I know it's going to be absolutely awesome. I appreciate you coming in today and uh, sharing with the audience. And yeah. uh, you got to come back after uh, you're open for a while and tell us uh, some of the lessons that you learned after you opened this particular uh, new concept and what you've learned and how you've uh, modified. I would love to. I've, uh, I know that in the next two months, we will have gone through a good journey. And I know that I'll have uh, definitely a lot more to share, which I'm happy to do so. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so much to learn from restaurateurs that when your inventory is spoiling every second of the day and you're having to move to make sure that you maximize your profits and your, and, uh, your revenue, I, I want to learn from that because I think sometimes as entrepreneurs we get lazy because our inventory isn't expiring. Sure. And that's what I love about the restaurant uh, business. So right. thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. Are you truly living your potential? Are you getting the results that you need, want, and desire? There was a time in my life where I was not, and I needed answers. For the last 16 years, I've been obsessed with the question of why some people achieve massive results and others do not. And I found out that it comes down to one thing, execution and the ability to take your ideas and plans and dreams and turn them into reality. That led me to the question, what are peak performers doing that others are not doing? How do they think? How do they act? What is behind the science of execution? I have now uncovered the secrets to the science of execution, and I want to share them with you. I have an intensive three-day event called the Business Execution Summit. 
If you are truly committed to taking your game to the next level and mastering the science of execution, the most important skill that you will ever acquire, simply take your phone and text the word BE Summit, one word, to 41411, and I'll send you out some additional information on our upcoming event. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of the shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating, as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at thorconklin.com, and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners, and if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day.